welcome to our class today we are going to discuss a new topic that is church fathers or we call it as apostolic fathers the term apostolic fathers describes the leaders and the collection of the earliest writers after the new testament so many times we think that apostolic fathers are some people that um, um they lived you no know, in the early days of the christianity but we need to very clearly understand that it is actually of course people but at the same time collection of writings a collection of writings we have we divided that as anti nicene church fathers post and uh, nicene and post nicene church fathers but mainly we call this apostolic fathers as the collection of earliest writers after the new testament so we have 27 books in the new testament written by the apostles and the close associates of the apostles so once uh, they finished their writings we had some more writings so those writings were actually known as the writings of the apostolic fathers or collection of their writings were known as the anti nicene fathers or apostolic fathers and these men were the hearers or disciples of the apostles they were disciples disciples and they they were the carriers and witnesses of the apostolic tradition that means these people who were considered as the apostolic fathers or the collection of writings that we have of the second century or maybe early first century and the second century were people who were the disciples of the apostles so they were known as the church fathers or we call them as the apostolic fathers so this apostolic fathers uh, wrote several letters we cannot deal with all the letters that they wrote but at least some of them we need to take as example when you get a chance to study on the apostolic fathers you can refer to the you can even take and refer some collection of writings like anti nicene church fathers it is available in our jmbc library a collection of books are available or in the website you can search for the anti nicene church fathers so these books were considered these writings were considered as the church father it may not necessary the name of a person because some important early christian documents which are considered as apostolic fathers or church fathers are not just one person so this collection of writings are actually known as apostolic fathers so we have some examples the first one clement of rome clement of rome so he was a follower of paul and we might have noticed this name clement in in paul's epistles and he is said to be the third bishop of rome and he wrote a letter to the corinthian church in about ad 95 and became the earliest known new testament writer known to us we know the last book written in the new testament is the book of revelation so after the book of revelation most probably this book the letter to the corinthian church written by clement of rome may be the first early new testament writing that available even today so normally people say this is the first or the earliest non new testament writer known to us that is clement of rome and his epistle to corinthian church is even today survive and is available and he was a follower of paul definitely and he was said to be the third bishop of rome and he wrote this letter to the church at corinth and the main purpose of his writing 
seems to be to solve a problem in the Corinthian church about maladministration or disregard of the elders by some people thus threatening the unity of the Corinthian church appealed to the church in Rome and and Clement as its head wrote to them so some issues were there at the church at Corinth of course when we read the bible we see lot of problems were there in the Corinthian church the the problems that the Corinthian church had in the early days was uh, very severe and very uh, very serious issues addressed by Paul but now the problem did not solve even that time that's why when this man clement of rome writing to the church at corinth he addressed certain issues in this epistle like mal administration the administration of the corinthian church was going through certain kind of issues or disregard of the elders by some people disregard of elders elders were not considering properly and that threaten the unity of the corinthian church and he appeal <coughs> to the church in rome and clement as its head wrote to them this letter to to correct the issues that they face so next we see ignatius of antioch ignatius of antioch he is believed to be the third bishop of antioch in syria or syrian antioch and he was arrested for his faith and he was deport deported to rome to be killed by wild beast in the roman amphitheater so he is believed to be the third bishop of antioch in syria he was arrested for his faith and deported to rome to be killed by wild beasts in the roman amphitheater and while in smyrna on his way to rome he wrote letters to ephesus magnatia tralles and rome and and from troas he wrote to the philadelphians smyrnians and a personal letter to polycarp polycarp was the bishop of smyrna at that time and that was about ad 110 and his main purpose was to thank them for their hospitality and to request them not to try to prevent him from the privilege of martyrdom and to warn them against coming heresies so this was the purpose of um, writing this letter the letter of um, um, ignatius of antioch uh, to several people and he is believed to be the third bishop of smyrna uh, sorry syria syrian antioch and he was arrested for his faith and he was deported to rome to be killed by wild beasts in the roman amphitheater so he the sentenced Uh, he was sentenced to death by the wild beasts of uh, in the amphitheater and while in smyrna on his way to rome he wrote letters to ephesus or uh, then magnatia tralles and rome and from troas he wrote to the philadelphians smyrnians and a personal letter to polycarp as well this was about ad 110 and the purpose of writing this letter was to thank them for their hospitality so these people took care of him well so to thank them and also to request them not to try to prevent him from the privilege of being a mart- martyr of martyrdom and to warn them against coming heresies this was the reason for him to write that this all these epistles next person or next apostolic father we can say polycarp of smyrna and this polycarp was believed to be a disciple of john the apostles and became 
the bishop of smyrna he was martyred in ad 155 in rome irenius said that polycarp wrote several letters irenius in the 3rd century he said polycarp wrote several letters but only his letter to the philippians has survived polycarp's epistle to philippians is survived and he wrote to warn against disorder in the church and heresy and to forward ignatius letter to them so this this is what he did so he was believed to be a disciple of apostle john and he became the bishop of smyrna and we know this smyrna is one of the seven churches mentioned in the book of revelation and he was martyred in ad 155 in rome he was burned alive um in rome and irenius said that polycarp wrote several letters this is what we see in the in the writings of irenius that polycarp wrote several letters not just one but only his letter to the philippians has survived and he wrote to one against disorder in the church and also about some heresies in the church and also to forward a letter of ignatius of antioch to the church at Philipp- uh, church at philippians philippi so this is <clears throat> these are the writings of polycarp of smyrna next one it is not a person this one also considered as church father a writing early christian writing the name of this writing is didache didache the didache didache means teaching we study in greek didaskalos means teacher didache is te- teaching so this is the teaching of the 12 apostles It is believed to be a summary of the apostles teaching written probably between ad 95 and ad 120 <clears throat> it advises on church matters and it is one of the most valuable documents for the study of the early church so many people use this document as one of the uh one of the doc- uh, documents people used to know about how the early church functioned so the functions of the early church was clearly mentioned in this writing the writing called didache and didache simply means teaching of the apostles 12 apostles and it was written around ad 95 to ad 120 and many people say it came from syria and it advises on church matters how to conduct um, communion how to conduct a fasting and how can how to conduct um, baptism and all those things are mentioned in this uh, writing so this is considered as a valuable document for the study of the early church even how to distinguish uh, distinguish a false prophet from a, a good prophet or a true prophet so all those things are mentioned in this uh, writing there are mainly two parts in this writing the first six chapters describe the two ways <coughs> first the way of life followed by true disciples keeping the commandments of the scriptures and the second the way of death that is the broader way followed by those who persist in wrong doing and this is not a doctrine of justification but of christian living so the first there are two parts the first first six chapters describe about the two ways two ways of life one is the way of life that the true disciples had that means they keep all the commandments and of the scripture and being a true disciple second way is the way of death there is a broader way or broad way and this followed by those who persist in wrong doing and this is not actually talking about anything about uh, doctrine of justification but this is mainly talking about the christian life 
And the second part is very important for knowing how early church function. That is from chapter 7 <coughs> to chapter 16. And this gives instructions in practical matters such as the administration of baptism and the Lord's Supper, fasting, prayers, how to treat itinerant evangelists, that means traveling evangelists, how to differentiate false prophets from the true and several other administrative matters of the church. So this is a valuable document to know, to study about the early Christianity. Didache is one of the sources that we always use to evaluate how early church function or the structure of the early church, especially the first two century churches. <coughs> the last one that we are going to deal is the Shepherd of Hermas. <coughs> this is also a document, the Shepherd of Hermas. And this is also considered as a church father or we consider it as apostolic writings. Most probably, Hermas was most probably a slave in Rome who had an unharmonious family life and he claimed to be a prophet. He was not well educated. His Shepherd was a very popular book. So Shepherd of Hermas was a very popular book and widely read in the churches in the early days. All these writings were used to read in the early churches, but not exactly as important as the scripture. But these writings are also very important and widely read in the churches. Hermas was also read and we are not very sure who is that. Most probably he was a slave in Rome and he had an unharmonious family life. He claimed to be a prophet. He was not well educated and his shepherd was a very popular book. And the shepherd has, the shepherd of Hermas has three parts. The first part is a series of five visions in which he is convicted of his sins, repents and is forgiven. And the church appears as an old woman at the beginning of the vision who becomes young and beautiful in the later visions. He also saw the church as a tower being built by angels and the stones were used to build it but some were rejected. In the midst of the vision the shepherd appeared as an angel of repentance. So the shepherd has three parts and the first part is a series of five visions in which he is convicted of his sins, repents and is forgiven and the church in that vision, the church is in the form of an old woman at the beginning of the vision who becomes young and beautiful in the later visions and he also saw the church as a tower being built by angels and stones were used to build it, but some were rejected. In the midst of the vision, the shepherd appeared as an angel of repentance. And the second part consists of 12 commandments given by the shepherd dealing with faith, the fear of God, simplicity in speech, good works and almsgiving, love of truth, purity, long-suffering, temptation, temperance, doubts and double-mindedness, sorrows, false prophets and evil desires. So the second part consists of 11 commandments given by the shepherd. Okay, so we already mentioned which are those 12 commandments given by the shepherd. And the third part is parables. And he closes the book with further reference to the tower which is being inspected by its lord and the book does not mention this is very important the book does not mention christ directly nor quoted the scripture directly and nor mention anything about eucharist eucharist means the holy communion so the book does not mention christ directly 
nor quoted the scripture directly and nor mentioned the eucharist but this this writing is also considered as apostolic writings so this is uh, the this is all about the apostolic fathers or the church fathers and if you if you are interested to study more or do want to do a research on the apostolic fathers you have to mainly go to the to the anti nicene church fathers or the post or the nicene and post nicene church fathers so church fathers we need to know it's not just some people but it's a collection of writings of the people or the disciples of disciples compiled a, some writings that the, that means the writings that came out after the new testament books after the book of revelation there are several writings came out from christianity or from the christians or from the apostles disciple disciples of the apostles and that those collection of writings were known as church fathers or the apostolic fathers so uh, we stop today and the next class we study about heresies in the early christianity